Look at this image. Look at this innocent baby boy, this innocent child, murdered in Rwanda. This baby was murdered, an innocent person made in the image of God. And here also in the United States of America, legalized abortion. That's abortion. In the USA, 40 years ago, 40 years ago, 40 years ago, Americans, the USA, legalized to murder a baby from the day of conception until the day of birth. For any reason the mother chooses, or no reason at all, any, any reason she chooses, she can do that to a baby, a child made in the image of God. And so I'm asking you, what is the difference between killing a child before the child is born, huh? before the baby is born, and murdering a child who's already been born? In the eyes of God, in the eyes of God Almighty, what is the difference? 40 years ago, America, America was once the greatest Christian nation on earth, maybe one of the greatest. Sent missionaries to Africa, all over the world, but today, 40 years ago, in January of 1973, the Americans legalized to murder a baby, just like this beautiful baby. And they do it in the first trimester, the second trimester, the third trimester, all the way to the day of birth. Do you know how many, who can guess how many babies have been legally, legally murdered in the past 40 years since 1973 in America? Can anyone guess? It's not one million. Let me tell you, it's not one million innocent children. It's not two. It's not 10. It's not 15. It's not 25. 55 million. Since January of 1973, 55 million babies in the same image that Jesus Christ was in, in the womb of his mother. Just a few weeks ago, we were all celebrating the Christmas holiday, remember? Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. And the baby Jesus Christ lived for nine months. Where? In the womb of Mary, right? In the womb of Mary in the same form as these innocent, innocent, innocent babies murdered by the USA. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. The United States of America, through her foreign policy, through backsliding away from God, backsliding away from God's law and God's word, which says, thou shalt not murder, right? Amen? Thou shalt not murder, hallelujah, innocent people. But the USA, 40 years ago in January of 1973, 40 years ago, said it's okay for a woman to murder the baby through abortion, to murder the baby from the day of conception until the day of birth for any reason, or no reason at all, or no reason at all. And beyond that, the foreign policy of the USA has been trying to force every country, including the countries of East Africa, including Kenya, using the United Nations, using money that they give. They're trying to force, satanic forces are trying to force Kenya, to try to force Kenya to legalize to murder these innocent children. These innocent children. And so we're making the comparison, which you can see with your own eyes without even my words. What's the difference between killing an innocent boy or girl, like was killed in Rwanda, through ethnic violence, between Hutus and Tutsis, What's the difference in a baby that's killed by Marie Stopes or by a, a clinic through the doctor's knife, through the doctor's, because the mother decided she couldn't carry that baby? Let me tell you, it's a lie. There is no one here, there is no one who is conceived, no matter what the circumstances of your conception, by accident. God has a purpose for every human being who's conceived. Amen? Amen. No matter if you don't know who your father is, maybe I don't know who my father is. If you don't know who your mother is, you've never met her since the day you were born. Nonetheless, God has a purpose for people. And no woman, no man should say, ah, this child, this pregnancy is a mistake. <laughs> because see, man and woman, it's not us who make human beings. There are some, let me tell you, there are some people who try very hard. Married people, they want to have a baby, they want to have a baby, they try, they try, they try, they can't. They can't. Because who is it? Who is it who opens the womb of a woman? 
I'm asking, who is it? It's God. Hallelujah. Amen. God is the one who opens the womb of a woman, no matter the circumstances. You see, God brings good out of evil. God takes evil things that people do. Let's say a man raped, there was incest, something, the most horrible thing you can imagine. And a child conceived with HIV. And the doctors say, oh, this child should not be born, in my opinion, ma'am. We should kill this child. We should terminate the pregnancy, which is the doctor's <coughs> language for we kill the child, made in the image of God. But see, the doctor doesn't know. The doctor's not God. The doctor doesn't know the purposes of God. Because the only one who has the right to take the life of an innocent person is God Almighty. Amen? God made life. If God wants to take me, or you, or you, or you today, God can take you. Amen? Hallelujah. God has the right. But people and governments like the government of the USA, let me say something. Thank God and praise God right now that you live in a good country, Kenya, with a government that says that it's not legal to murder a baby. Praise God for that, that the baby has a protection in the womb of the mother. Every one of us standing here today was once this small. Every one of us was once this vulnerable in the womb of our mothers. Thank God that it's against the law here. But I challenge you, I challenge you, coming from a nation, USA, that is rich with money and material goods, but is poor in spirit. Mother Teresa, who, who's ever heard of Mother Teresa? Everyone's heard of Mother Teresa, right? Of Calcutta, India? Mother Teresa said it is a great poverty. She called it a great poverty. No matter how much money you have, to kill the womb, the baby in the womb, to kill the baby in the womb. She said, that is great poverty. Even if you have five cars and, and ten mansions and all the money you have, but you murder your own child, may God forbid. May God forbid. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 8 says, Open your mouth. Open your mouth for those who cannot speak for themselves. Open your mouth in the cause of all such as are poor and needy. Open your mouth in the cause of all who are appointed to be destroyed. My brothers, my sisters, those are those babies in the womb. They can't speak. They have no voice. The child in the womb is alive. He's happy. We use cameras, you know, they go inside. They can see the baby smiling. They can see the baby frowning. They can see him angry. That's a person. From the day of conception until the day of birth in the womb of the mother. That's a person. That's a person made in the image of God. Because even God was not ashamed to dwell in the womb of a woman. Even God, through the person of Jesus Christ, amen, was in the womb of the Holy Virgin Mary. So God was not ashamed to take on this form. But the proud government of the USA has decided for 40 years not to protect these babies. In fact, if I go and I try to stop the abortions happening at the clinic, try to say, no, don't kill these babies, defend these babies. Guess what? Obama will send police to take me to prison. I've been arrested over 12 times in California alone, in California, just for showing these pictures, because they can't bear to see what they've done. 55 million many, many millions more than were killed in Rwanda. Many, many millions more than were killed in Rwanda are the babies killed by abortion in the USA. And through the foreign policy of the USA, they force it on smaller countries. So, I'm, yeah, this is what was done in Rwanda through ethnic violence. But I'm saying, what is the difference between killing a baby who has been born and the policy of USA to kill a baby before the baby is born? In the eyes of God. What is the difference? No difference. No difference. No difference. Yes. Amen. So the challenge, and it's not my challenge, the challenge from the Word of God to Kenya, to every nation on the earth, to every people who say they fear the God of the Bible. Abortion or what? The challenge is to protect the babies in the womb. Do not allow, may God forbid that Kenya should allow, the pressure coming from the USA, 
the pressure coming from Europe, the pressure coming from the UK, they're saying, it's okay, legalize this, allow these babies to be killed. We will not, we will never regulate it. God forbid. Amen. We will never regulate it. Amen. And that's the challenge, never do this. Because that day comes, sure, you might get rich, you might have many cars, you might have many things, but it's only for a moment. Once you go against the law of God, once you murder the innocent children, the Holy Spirit of God departs from your family. It departs from your nation. Hey, I'm bringing a first-hand witness. I've watched it happen. When you legalize in your nation, as we did 40 years ago in the USA, when you legalize murder, your families begin to disintegrate. Your churches begin to become apostate and backslidden. The spirit of God and the spirit of love and the spirit of goodness moves away. And all that's left is selfishness. And Satan has been turned loose. Once you open that door, it's just like a vampire. If a vampire comes to your house and you're the father, you open the door, you see the vampire there, he wants to come in. He wants to suck the blood out of your children. Do you invite him in that house? Do you? No. You say, no, you can't come into my house. I'm the man of the house. This house belongs to God, amen? By uh, God's grace, let Kenya be a house and continue to be a house that belongs to God, amen? Let them say no to the pressure from the USA. You know, the same thing happened just as missionaries came from America to bring the gospel to Africa, the same thing happened in the Bible with the Jews. They brought the knowledge of the Word of God to many people. And then what happened? The Jews backslid. They disobeyed God. They began to do what? The Bible says they began to offer their sons and their daughters to idols. They began to sacrifice their children. That's what the Israelites began to do. And God was very, very angry with them because they were supposed to represent God Almighty. But instead, they were sacrificing their children, the Israelites, to pagan gods, to the god Baal, to the god Ishtaref, to false gods. They were sacrificing their babies, burning them as a worship to false gods. And so God says, I'm going to send a people to judge you, O Israel, to judge you because, why? Because it was your job to preach to the nations my word and my law. But now you, Israel, have become worse than the people you were supposed to preach the word to. You've become worse. You're killing your children in the name of false gods. God is saying the same thing to the USA. You know, Moses wandered with the children of Israel in the wilderness because of disobedience. Because of disobedience for how many years? How many years did the, did the children of Israel wander in the wilderness? Forty. Forty years, that's right. For forty years. You see, the number...